Hi everyone, Miss Claire here. I'm so glad you decided to join me for story time. This is Mini Explorers and today we are going to be exploring our inquiry question, which is, what do you dream about? What do you dream about? Lots of people dream about lots of different things. We have two books today and they're both about different people and about their dreams. But first, we're gonna start with our welcome song. Let's put your hand up in the air and take a big deep breath. And out. And we sing. Welcome, welcome everyone. Let's reach up and touch the sun. Now let's watch the rain fall down. Gently, gently to the ground. Curl yourself into a ball. One, two, three, let's sit up tall. Excellent. Now, before we read our books, I have a story about some kittens that I would like to tell you. And it involves my flannel board here. Are you ready? Great. Six little kittens found a box of paint. They jumped right in. <gasps> Their mother would faint. The first little kitten came out red. I'll be orange, the next kitten said. The third little kitten turned bright yellow. I'll be green, said the next little fellow. The fifth little kitten said, my favorite color is blue. Purple for me, said the sixth little kitten with a mew. Dancing home, the little kittens go to show their mother a kitten rainbow. Mama Cat said, you are the most colorful kittens I've ever seen. Now hop in the bathtub and let's get clean. And hop in the bathtub. There's one out of the bath. Two out of the bath. Let's put the yellow kitten in the bath. Three out of the bath. And let's put the green kitten in the bath. And let's put the blue kitten in the bath. And finally, let's have the purple kitten hop in the bathtub. And they are all clean. All right, it's time to read our stories. So our first book that we're gonna read today is titled Drum Dream Girl, How One Girl's Courage Changed Music. And it's a poem and it was written by Margarita Engel and the pictures were drawn by Rafael Lopez. Now this book is set in the 1930s, which is almost 100 years ago, um, on the island of Cuba, and it's about a Chinese African Cuban girl named Mio Castro Zaldariaga, and she wanted very much to be uh, a drummer. And at that time, traditionally, only boys were drummers, and so her dream was to learn to play the drums, and this is her story. On an island of music, in a city of drum beats, the drum dream girl dreamed of pounding tall conga drums, tapping small bongo drums, and boom boom booming with long, loud sticks on big, round, silvery, moon bright timbales. But everyone on the island of music in the city of drum beats believed that only boys should play drums. So the drum dream girl had to keep dreaming, quiet, secret, drumbeat dreams. At outdoor cafes that looked like gardens, she heard drums played by men. But when she closed her eyes, she could also hear her own imaginary music. When she walked under wind wavy palm trees in a flower bright park, she heard the whir of parrot wings, the clack of woodpecker beaks, the dancing tap of her own footsteps, and the comforting pat of her own heart. Turn the book there. 
At carnivals, she listened to the rattling beat of towering dancers on stilts and the dragon clang of costume drummers wearing huge masks. At home, her fingertips rolled out their own dreamy drum rhythm on tables and chairs. And even though everyone kept reminding her that girls on the island of music had never played drums, the brave drum dream girl dared to play tall conga drums and small bongo drums and big round silvery moon bright timbales. Her hands seemed to fly as they rippled, rapped, and pounded all the rhythms of her drum dreams. Her big sisters were so excited that they invited her to join their new all-girl dance band. But their father said only boys should play drums. So the drum dream girl had to keep dreaming and drumming alone. Until finally her father offered to find a music teacher who could decide if her drum dreams deserve to be heard. The drum dream girl's teacher was amazed. The girl knew so much, but he taught her more and more and more and she practiced and she practiced and she practiced until the teacher agreed that she was ready to play her small bongo drums outdoors at a starlit cafe that looked like a garden where everyone who heard her dream bright music sang and danced and decided that girls should always be allowed to play drums and both boys and girls should feel free to dream. The end. You know, actually, this also says that uh, she went to New York City and she got to play for the president of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his wife, uh, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. So she even got to come to America and play for the president, which is pretty cool. So that's our first book. Our second book is about Jane Goodall. And this book was written by Maria Isabel Sanchez Vergara. And this book is, so this is about Jane and she wanted very much to uh, study chimpanzees. That was her dream. And so let's find out if she was able to do that. When Jane was a little girl, her father gave her a stuffed chimpanzee named Jubilee. She carried him wherever she went. Jane loved animals very much, and she wanted to live in the jungle with wild chimpanzees, just like the heroes of her bedtime stories, Tarzan and Jane. At night, her mother read her their adventures. But Jane could not afford to go to college to study animals. So she would have to study them in her own way. She saved every penny she had until she could buy a boat ticket to Kenya in Africa. When she arrived, Jane met a well-known scientist named Louis Leakey. He was looking for a chimpanzee researcher willing to study them in the wild. He thought that they could learn about humans by studying apes. It was the opportunity Jane had been waiting for. So Jane took another journey to the shores of Gombe in Tanzania. To start with, she couldn't see any chimpanzees, but she had a feeling that they were near watching her. She decided to sit quietly in the same spot day after day. Finally, a small group of chimpanzees appeared and let her sit with them. Jane had been accepted into their family. Instead of numbering them as other scientists did, Jane decided to give every chimpanzee a name. There was David Graybeard, Flo, Flint, Fifi, and Gigi, to name a few. By watching them carefully, she noticed that some chimps were kind, quiet, and generous, while others were bullies. It seemed that humans and chimps were not so different after all. Then Jane made an, an, another incredible discovery. Chimpanzees could make their own tools. This was something only humans were thought to do. Here's the tool she's talking about. So see how it's a stick? Well, they use it to poke it into the holes to get out the bugs that they want to eat. So that's why they're using, so the stick becomes a tool to get food. 
Jane's talent was quickly recognized by Cambridge University. Here she studied her for her doctorate in animal behavior, and it wasn't long before she wrote her first article for one of the most famous science magazines. Jane continued to study chimps uh, in the Gombe for 40 years, and actually now it's 50 years. But jungles were starting to disappear across Africa, which put all the animals in danger, and she knew she had to do something. Jane joined countless projects to protect nature. She was no longer just a courageous researcher, but also the most determined wildlife defender the world had ever seen. And the little girl who loved animals challenges us to be kind to nature, because if chimpanzees can live in harmony with their environment, we can too. And here are some pictures of her. There she is as a little girl. And then she's a little bit older here in 1940. I bet this is when she started to dream about being able to go and research chimpanzees. And then here she is. Oh, she's holding binoculars. And there she is about, what's that, about 25 years ago. There she is with one of the chimpanzees that she was studying. The end. Thanks so much for joining me for story time today. I really enjoyed sharing those stories about Mio and about Jane. They were both so brave to follow their dreams and I know that you are brave too. So why don't you stretch your arms out wide and bring them around to give yourself a squeeze and say, I am brave. I am brave. And say, I am smart. I am smart. And you can say, I am loved. I am loved. My opinions and feelings matter. My opinions and feelings matter. And you can say, I am helpful. I am helpful. Great, good job. I'm so glad that you joined me for story time. Let's end how we always do with our goodbye song. So you sing it like this. Goodbye friends, goodbye friends, goodbye friends, it's time to say goodbye. Thanks so much for joining me and I hope I see you next time. And remember, stay curious.